confrontation with the world. In 1928, Jung painted a mandala of a golden castle in the calligraphic volume of Lieber Novice. It struck him with that. It struck him. <clears throat> it struck him that the mandala had something Chinese about it. Shortly afterward, Richard Wilhelm, Wilhelm, sent him the secret of the golden flower, asking to write, asking him to write a commentary on it. Wilhelm had spoken at the psychological club in 1921 on the I Ching, and Jung later got to know him at Count Kessler's School of Wisdom in Darmast. Jung was struck by the text and its timing. The text gave me an undreamed of confirmation of my ideas about the mandala and the circumambulation of the center. This was the first event which broke through my isolation. I became aware of an affinity. I could establish ties with someone and something. The significance of this is reflected in the lines he wrote beneath the painting of the Yellow Castle. Young was struck between the correspondences between the imagery and conceptions of this text and his own paintings and fantasies and the fate that had brought him and Wilhelm together. On May 25th, 1929, he wrote to Wilhelm, Fate appears to have given us the role of two bridge pillars which carry the bridge between east and west. It was only later that he had realized that the alchemical nature of the text was important. On September 10, 1929, he wrote to Wilhelm, I am thrilled by this text which stands so close to our unconscious. Jung's commentary on the secret of the golden flower was a turning point. It was his first public discussion of the significance of the mandala. For the first time, he anonymously presented three of his own paintings from Livernavis as examples of European mandalas and commented on them. To Wilhelm, he wrote on October 28th of 1929 concerning the mandalas in the volume. The image amplif amplify one another precisely through their diversity. They give an excellent image of, an, of the effort of the unconscious European spirit to grasp Eastern eschatology. This connection between the European unconscious spirit and Eastern eschatology became one of the major themes in Jung's work in the 1930s. He explored it through further collaborations with the Indologists Wilhelm Hauer and Heinrich Zimmer. At the same time, the form of the work was crucial. Rather than the, revealing the full details of his own experiments or those of his patients, Jung used the parallels with the secrets of the golden flower as an indirect way of speaking about it. Much as he had begun to do in chapter 5 of Psychological Types, this allegoric method now became his preferred form. Rather than write directly of his experiences, he commented on analogous developments in esoteric practices, most of all in medieval alchemy. Shortly after, Jung abruptly left off working on Libra Novice. The last full-page image was left unfinished, and he stopped transcribing the text. In 1932, he stopped writing in the black books. He later recalled... When I had arrived at the central point, the confrontation with the world began. I began to give many lectures and to write small essays. At that time, I gave lectures in many places. A number of these were collected together in the edited volumes, Contributions of Analytical Psychology, and Selim Problem de Gogum War. Problems of the soul in the present time. Thus, his confrontation with his soul drew to a close, and the confrontation with the world began. 
He saw these activities as a form of compensation for the years of inner preoccupation. In 1932, he received the Literature Prize of the City of York. On November 25th, he wrote to Ruth Bailey, since, since I'm getting dangerously famous in this old continent, I've no peace and leisure anymore. The Negro spiritual says, steal away to Jesus, and I stay. Steal away to Bolagin if I can help it.